Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we are actually going to be drawing something for once. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class for Vertex. And this is how we're going to specify how to draw things. Vertices are going to be our little points, and our graphics card is just going to connect the dots. Now, for now, my Vertex is just going to have a position, so some vector free f for its position. And that's all I'm going to have for now. So I'm going to have a public vertex taking in a vector 3f for position. This dot pos equals pos. It's just going to be a wrapper class for now. There's going to be more to this later, but for now, all I really care about is it being a point. Trust me, there's going to be a lot more that I care about with vertices later on. But again, right now I just want to draw something. So I'm going to create a public static final int for the size of the vertices. This is going to effectively contain... This is essentially going to represent how many integers are total in this class, which seems a little bit odd, but it's going to end up being very important. So right now, we just have a vector 3f. Vector 3f has three... Well, I guess I shouldn't have said integers, but how many different numbers, I guess you could say, we have in this? It has three numbers, three floating point numbers, floats, so my size is 3. This is going to be very important very soon. And that's all I care about with vertices for right now. I can go ahead and get rid of that. Next up, I'm going to create a class for the mesh. This is what's actually going to have our rendering code and all the data. It's going to have a whole bunch of vertices that it's going to connect the dots with and draw. So you might think we'd start off th this class by creating all this big vertex array or this big array list of vertices for all the data, right? Actually, there's only two pieces of data I'm going to have in this class. Some int, I'm going to, well, private int, I'm going to call it VBO, and some private int that I'm going to call size. You might be wondering, whoa, how on earth are we going to store all of the different vertices we need to draw with two integers? Well, that's because this integer right here, VBO, is going to be a pointer. I know, pointers in Java. The world's descended into madness. But that's what we're going to do. The VBO is going to be, well, technically a handle, but pointer all the same. And the size is going to be how many bytes are of data we have, essentially. Well, maybe not bytes. If I'll, I'll see this the system when I actually get to the method. But yeah, it's going to it's going to effectively tell us how much data we have from this pointer on. So yeah, a little bit low level, but it's how we're going to do things. I'm going to do things, and you'll see why. So now I'm going to create the constructor, which is going to be public mesh, not going to take anything in. And VBO, I'm going to initialize to GL gen buffer. And, of course, I need to import OpenGL for that. Import static or dot GGL dot OpenGL dot GL11. Is it not in GL11? No? I could have sworn this was in OpenGL11. No, I'm certain. This is an OpenG11. Why is this not working? Um, one moment. And you see, Benny has forgotten about extension land. Even though you could access VBOs in earlier versions of OpenGL using extensions, they weren't officially a part of OpenGL until GL 1.5. So, there you go. And there's that. Now, as for the size, I'm just going to initialize this to zero. So what methods am I going to have in here? Well, first off, I'm going to have some method, public void, add vertices. It's going to take in some vertex array of data, and it's going to add them at our pointer, at our VBO. Now, this isn't that hard, because OpenGL has methods for it, but what's really important here is the size, because I immediately need to get... well, maybe not immediately, and actually, I should call this vertices. That's more descriptive. I'm sorry, I'm a little all over the place right now, but that's all right. But the very first thing I want to do in this method is I want to take size, initialize it to vertices, dot, length, there we go, times vertex dot size. That's why I had that constant earlier, because I need to know how big one vertex is. So I'm going to take the total number of vertex, vertices, multiply it by how big one vertex is, 
and that's going to be the total size of the data I'm storing at this VBO. And that's going to be important for actually drawing this. So yeah, now actually adding the data is pretty straightforward. You do geo bind buffer, geo, array buffer, that's the type of buffer, and then which buffer? VBO. There you go. And now any buffer operations we do are going to be affecting this buffer as OpenGL is treating it as. And sending the data is pretty straightforward. It only takes one method, GL buffer data, GL array buffer, and we just have to pass in the vertices, right? Well, if only it was that easy. You see, Java stores, it internally stores all your data in arrays differently than OpenGL is expecting. There's formatting differences for some reason. So, in order to actually get this to work, we're going to have to reformat the array. We're going to have to rearrange all the data so it's in the format OpenGL is expecting. Yay! It's going to be lots of fun, so I'm just going to comment this out for now. And I'm going to create a new class called util. And this is going to give us a float buffer. We're going to be using Java's class, the float buffer class for this. And, well, the method we're going to add for now is going to be a method that's going to take a float buffer, it's going to have all the data, it's going to put it in the right format. So, we're going to create public static void create flipped buffer. Flipped because it's flipped all the data into the correct position. You can take in some vertex array date, vertices, because it's more descriptive. And this is going to be a little bit of an interesting method. First off, we're going to have to create a float buffer of the data in the first place, which isn't easy either, because I don't know. For some reason, Java made their float buffer class a little bit difficult to use. Don't ask me why, I didn't create this. So we're going to have to create another helper method for this. We're going to create public static float buffer, just to create a float buffer. If I can actually spell that for some reason. I can't type that. There we go. Take in some size. And yeah, this is why I prefer doing OpenGL code in C++, but that's alright. Fortunately, Lightweight Java Game Library provides a buffer utils class, which has a method for this. Takes in the flow buffer of size. And yeah, but yeah. So I'm still going to have this wrapper method, though, just because in case for some reason OpenGL's m default method isn't working out, I can go in and change it later. Or if the API changes, I don't have to refactor all my code to use the new method. I have this one method that does the same thing. <coughs> so yeah, now in float buffer, I'm just going to use this method, so create float buffer of size vertices dot length. And actually, hang on, do I need to multiply that by size, or am I overthinking this? Yes, I should. Times vertex dot size. So that's created the new buffer that we're going to have all the data. Now we want to actually add the data to this buffer. We're going to put the vertices. And... Wait a second, that's not right. Yeah, that can't possibly be right. What is... One second. Right. I, I don't know why I thought that would work. I guess I'm thinking of another similar method that we may end up creating later. Yes, more buffering. <sighs> That's alright. So, I'm going to create a for loop. i is less than the total length of vertices. i++. plus plus. There. And here, I'm going to add all the data to the buffer. So add values, sub i dot vertices sub i dot get position dot get x. And I'm going to do this for every single element, which fortunately is just x, y, and z now. But please, remember this method right here, because this has literally screwed me over at every single point that it could have screwed me over. Anytime you add some data to the to vertex, you will need to go in and change this method so it adds that data in. Otherwise, 
it will not work. There may be a better way of doing this, but at least I haven't thought of it. So yeah. So now, all we have to do is flip the buffer, and that puts it in the proper order. So fortunately, the actual flipping isn't that hard. It's just taking all the data and getting it in the correct place. And why? Oh, right. It should be a float buffer. So there. Now I can go back to our mesh class. Whoops. Oh dear. And I can add this method in. Well, I can use this method. So util dot create flip buffer of vertices. Excellent. And really, that's all there is to actually buffering the data, unless I've somehow horribly screwed it up. It's not applicable for the arguments int float buffer. Well, that's just fantastic. One moment. Okay, it wasn't a big deal. I just needed to add this draw hint. I forgot about this parameter. <clears throat> All this parameter does is it's a hint to OpenGL as to what type of data we're sending it. In this case, I'm t saying, hey, we're sending you static data. We're not really going to be changing this data that much. And that's just a hint to OpenGL, so it can optimize it with the assumption that, hey, this data isn't really going to be changing. So yeah, that's the whole purpose of that. There's other things like GL dynamic draw, so that'll be for the data changing, of course. Or GL stream draw, which means it's always changing. Every single frame we're sending you new data. And that way OpenGL can just sort of optimize for different cases. But yeah, that's all there is to actually buffering the data or storing it. That stores it on the graphics card in some location that we got from OpenGL. It's that straightforward. And I also created our next interface for the new, well, not an interface, our, I created the, I started creating the next method, the draw method, which is actually going to draw this. And this is also pretty straightforward. All we have to do, bind the buffer, and then gl draw arrays, what type of data we want to draw, well, how do we want to draw the data? That's what this parameter is going to be. So do you want to draw it as triangles, as lines, or how do you want to draw it? In this case, I want to draw triangles. Now this next parameter is where do you want to start? I want to start at the beginning, so I'm going to do zero. And last, hmm, okay, for now I'm going to get rid of this multiplication by vertex size, because this particular method, which I'm going to use for the time being, just takes in how many vertices we want to draw. In that case, it's just going to be vertices.size. I'll change it to a later method when, well, the, the, I'll multiply by vertex that size when that becomes important. So yeah, now next up I'm going to be using an OpenGL 2.0 feature, so I'm going to import OpenGL 2.0, and the reason is I want to tell OpenGL how to interpret all this data I sent it. So first off I'm going to GL enable vertex attrib array, and I start with number if array 0, and then at the end, I'm going to go ahead and disable this. Now, what this does is, it's sort of OpenGL's way of dividing up the data. I can divide into array 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so forth and so on. I can divide up the data into these different segments. And then, using the next method I'm going to use, GL, which I'm going to use right here, if I can actually type it, there we go, GL vertex attrib pointer, I can tell OpenGL how to interpret different types of these data. So first off, which array am, is this going to be a pointer to tell how to interpret? Zero. So segment zero is going to be interpreted like this. There's three elements to it. They're going to be floats. And next up is the option to normalize it, which I don't really care about. So next parameter how big is one individual vertex? And here's how I'm going to do that. First I'm going to take vertex.size, and vertex.size is the number of floating point numbers that are in what one individual vertex. I'm going to multiply that by 4, because each floating point number is 4 bytes. Well, single precision floating point number is 4 bytes. So 4 times the total number of floating point numbers must be the total size of one individual vertex at least as far as OpenGL is concerned. And final parameter is how big 
is, well not how big, what am I saying? <laughs> so now it knows how big one individual vertex is. The final parameter is where in each individual vertex does this particular piece of data start? And this one starts right at the beginning, so zero. I don't even need to worry about that. And that completes the draw method. It now has enough data to figure out how to draw this thing. So, now I'm going to go in my game class, and I'm going to go ahead and implement this. Well, not implement it, but I'm going to go ahead and put it to use, just for a quick example. So I'm going to create a private mesh, call it mesh, and my constructor, I'm going to say mesh is a new mesh, and I'm going to create a vertex array of some data that I can add to this. And I'm finally going to call it data, don't worry. So, vertex array, and here, new vertex, takes in some vector, new vector 3f, and some position. So, let's see, I'm going to start in the bottom left corner, so that should be right here in OpenGL, that's negative 1 on x, negative 1 on y, and I don't care about the z component, so I'll just set it to 0. And, let's see. In case you can't, haven't figured it out, I'm just going to create one big giant triangle on the screen. So next component, component should be the bottom right, so negative 1, comma, 1. Or wait, no. Or is that backwards? I think that's backwards, so I'll go ahead and put the final vertex right in the middle. And the final vertex is going to be at 0, right in the center, and at the top, so 1. And that should be the vertices for one giant screen size triangle. Possibly not drawn in the right order, so it might get called out. So, I'm going to go ahead and add these data, all this data to the mesh. And in my render method, I'm just going to do mesh.draw. I'm going to draw the mesh every single frame. So now if I run, I drew the vertices in the wrong order. So, that's alright. I can just flip them around. And now they should be drawn in the right order. There we go. Oh dear, that's not quite the triangle I had in mind, but hey, it works. It's a triangle. So yeah, there you go. That's how you get, draw a triangle. In... <laughs> well, so that wasn't really the goal. This is how we get a generic mesh data. You can input essentially a mesh of any arbitrary complexity if you want. I don't recommend doing it at this, or that at this point, because... I don't really have any way of representing faces, so if I reuse vertices, that's going to get a little bit weird if in this current implementation, but yeah. For the time being, I have a basic mesh implementation. And just for fun, let's see what OpenGL does if I just don't give it these vertex attribute points, if I just straight up draw it. Because I've actually never tried this, I want to see what happens. It doesn't draw, okay. I was just curious, but, but yeah. So there you go, you got our kind of interesting triangle, I guess. And yeah, so hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and... Oh, wait, that's why it didn't work, isn't it? I wanted it like that. Aha! And now if I reverse them, it'll give me the triangle I intended. Right? Come on, OpenGL, you gotta do this for me, right? Yes, that's the triangle I was trying to create. One giant full screen triangle. And yeah, so now you can draw triangles. So, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you in the next video.